If we want to find our life's purpose, we tend to look for some self-help book or hack that will tell us what to do with our life. Or we follow people who are successful and try to retrofit what they did for our own lives. We want to live the ideal life and we deeply want to look back at our own lives and think that that was a life well lived. But the problem is we don't know what an ideal life means for us and more so we don't know how to measure the ideal life. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about this absolutely simple yet mind-blowing book that I've just read, How Will You Measure Your Life by Clayton Christensen. Clayton Christensen was an academic and business consultant at Harvard who was widely regarded as the best management thinker in the world. In 2010, in his last class, he asked his students to apply the business theories that they had learned for their own personal lives to find answers to three simple questions. First, how can I be sure that I'll be happy in my career? Second, how can I be sure that my relationships with my spouse and my family become an enduring source of happiness? Third, how can I be sure I'll stay out of jail? And throughout the book, Clayton Christensen answers these three questions with a bunch of personal examples, business examples, and a lot of life experiences and stories to help you develop a metric, a measurement, and a framework to evaluate how do we want to look back on our lives and how do we want to measure how we have lived our lives. But before we get into the questions, why has this book even had such a big impact on me? Well, for starters, the way I look at Clayton Christensen is that he's sort of like a life strategist who gives you a business plan for life. And the reason I find that extremely useful is because Christensen has had experiences in both the field of academics and the field of entrepreneurship. And when we look at examples from both these fields and how they actually fundamentally apply to our personal lives, it becomes increasingly clear to me that this is the meta takeaway, that I should treat my life like a business. And the moment I have this distance and the moment I have this bird's eye view on life as a whole, I think it becomes extremely easy to live life meaningfully and measure it accurately. So with that said, let's jump right into the questions. The first question is, how can I be sure that I'll be happy in my career? And really the main takeaway or the main lesson for me was to have a professional strategy for myself and for my career. Strategy is knowing what you want and how you want to get there. It is balancing the resource allocation of time, talent, and energy between deliberate plans and emergent opportunities and problems to navigate life. So in every professional endeavor, there are two kinds of factors that really influence the fulfillment and happiness of one's career, the hygiene factors and the motivation factors. Christensen says that compensation or perks are only the hygiene factors, but the problem arises when we conflate the hygiene factors with the motivation factors. But the motivation factors are really not necessarily determined by how much you are paid or what your designation is. The motivation factors are determined by challenging work, recognition, responsibility, and the space for personal growth. And having our personal strategy and life strategy in mind allows us to have this clarity of not conflating the motivation factors with the hygiene factors. And doing that allows us to balance our deliberate plans with the emergent opportunities and problems, which essentially allows us to live more happy and meaningful lives. The second question Christensen answers is how can I be sure that my relationships with my spouse and my family become an enduring source of happiness? The main point I learned from the book about this question was that we cannot sequence life investments. Christensen Christensen says that relationships take time and we cannot sequence relationships. We can't say that first I'm going to get educated, then I'm going to make a lot of money, and then I'm going to invest all the remaining time in the relationships. Well, by the time that we have actually gotten educated and we have made a lot of money, it's too late to actually start building the relationship because all these years that we have not invested consistently in our relationships, those relationships have actually been accidentally developed. And that's why one of the reasons Christensen says that a lot of people don't have fulfilling relationships is because they sequence life investments. And one of the biggest mistakes that we could make is to not consistently invest in our relationships with our families and friends. So if we want fulfilling relationships, we need to consistently invest time in them, 
not wait until when we actually need the relationships. The final question that Christensen answers is that how can I be sure to live a life of integrity and stay out of jail? And the main principle that I learned over there was that it's easier to stick to your principles 100% of the time than 98% of the times. C.S. Lewis once said that the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. In Christensen's view, life is a never-ending stream of extenuating circumstances, which means that we'll always have opportunities to put away our principles and say, oh, I'm just not gonna go for my run just this once. Oh, I'm just gonna put my work above my relationship just this one time. But it's only during these times that we make compromises on our principles that marks the beginning of us continuing to make those compromises for an extended period of time. And that is what Christensen says is one of the biggest mistakes that we tend to make. But it's during these times when compromising on our principles is easy that we must stick to them because once we give in, there is no stopping us from giving in yet again. So it's because of all these different examples, life experiences, anecdotes, and stories from a bunch of different fields of academics, entrepreneurship, and education that I have learned not how will I measure my life, but how will I be able to develop a meaningful, purposeful framework for actually measuring my life. And that is the biggest lesson that the book teaches you. Thank you for watching.